Well, I think that I think what we saw in Chile and Argentina is happening everywhere in the world. This is not an exclusive series of events or evolution of what's happening to wild nature. It, sitting here, as the Nasdaq goes up, as the Dow and the SP 500 goes up, so goes down usually the percentage of, of nature being transferred to production. That's essentially what the calculation looks like. And so really, at the end of the day, we feel that the non-human world has an intrinsic value all its own. It doesn't need us to place value on it. And that social systems need a healthy ecosystem to remain healthy. So I think everybody decides what they can do to protect those things they love. And, and in our case, it was to create national parks and to bring back species that had gone extinct and, and uh, from jaguars all the way through giant anteaters to pumas and so on. So that's, that's the nut of it. Uh, we're, we're looking at a map of, of where some of these parks are. I mean, here in the United States, we have the national park system. Yes, which the first. has been heralded as the nation's greatest idea. Um, what did you see happening in, in these areas that, that concerned you? If you look at the southern cone of Chile and Argentina, which this map represents, it's, uh, it has every type of landscape from the driest deserts in the world to massive grasslands down in Patagonia, obviously the Andes. And, and there were great opportunities to acquire large landscapes and two willing governments Chile and Argentina to take them on as new national parks. So if you think about um, Theodore Roosevelt Jr. and the, the people who started the Rockefeller family kick-starting the national park system here, it's really a very similar effect, but 100 years later, 120 years later. When you did this, I mean, it, it looks very obvious, looking back in hindsight, what were you were doing. But when you first started, there was a lot of concern from some of the local populations, thinking that that's not really what you were up to. Yeah, I think when you when you look back, you look you're sitting here today, and you look back to 1993, two foreigners come in and start buying up hundreds of thousands of of um, rainforest and not cutting it, and saying that they were going to make a park out of it and everyone would be welcome. This was heretical in a certain, just because no one had done it before. And I think in any culture, anything new is gazed with suspicion. So people said we were creating a nuclear waste site for the United States, creating a new Jewish state, even though we were both Anglicans, that we were creating a, a, a military site for Argentina to come in and finish the Chileans off for good. But all of these things, I think it happens everywhere. And yeah, it was tough in the beginning, but, but shortly thereafter, I would say that it, it, it calmed down and we went on to, to create these 13 new national parks and whatever else happened from the early 90s. What, what's your goal at this point? You have the 13 national parks that are set up. Now what? Oh, I think that I plan to do these kinds of things until I physically can't, or physically or mentally can't. And the rewilding part of our work has really transformed what we're doing you mean with and the how we do it, bringing back all the species that are missing in any place we work. As they say, landscape without wildlife is just scenery. And that came along, I would say, midway in our work. And rewilding has, which is complicated and long term and expensive, is really one of the, the strategies for the future. Because the goal in creating national parks isn't just to create the national park itself, it's to create the space and the possibility that natural ecosystems can come back and be whole again. And, and obviously, 
that people can come from wherever they are and, and visit the parks and have a sense of ownership about them.